its original intent was to be training rooms. Uh, Mercy Management was not even in this facility originally. Really? Yeah. Um, and then um, it kind of got brought into this, and we used this for a number of years by what they call cold EOC. So it was always a training room set up, and you had to come in and Put all the phones in, put all the computers in, run oh, the gosh. wiring, and move the tables. And oh, no. And we had it down to a science of about an hour and a half to set the room up. That's that's pretty impressive considering yeah. how much you have and here. We have just, over time, been able to uh, transition it into what it is today with you know, this setup ready to go, at least this half. Yeah. The other half still remains to be the training room for fire rescue um, and we still rearrange tables and set up phones but not to the extreme that we used to gotcha yeah. and then you also can keep because this this curtain pulls back and so yeah so you can just room over there you can keep going yeah so you've so got this is half the room and then the other half is this size and then so <clears throat> you know, this is the side this setup basically mirrors somewhat of ICS and so this this side is operations, the far side is logistics, mm -hmm. and then we work off the emergency support functions, uh, just like from FEMA to the state to us, if you're familiar. Yep. So we then we categorize them within either operations or logistics. Gotcha. So and that's done differently everywhere. Mm -hmm. No matter where you go, it's done differently, but the end result's the same. Gotcha. And it's always fascinating to me how that happens. We visited, and we're, we're hopefully getting a new facility. So we've been visiting other EOC locations across the southeast to get, you know, lessons learned, what didn't go well on their construction or process. And, but you talk with the directors there and say, well, how do you do things? Well, it's inevitably different mm -hmm. because every community has different needs, but the, the result's always the same. Gotcha. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's fascinating in that, in that respect. But, um, but, we activate uh, pretty frequently comparative to other counties in the South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, we probably uh, have true emergency either in special event wise or actual incidents uh, a couple times a year. Uh, and then lately we've had our fair share of activations due to our tropical systems. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> yeah. So we, we did Matthew in 2016 and then. Um, Florence in 2018. We we had a small activation for Joaquin in 15. We had an ice storm in 16, 14. Uh, so 2017 we didn't activate for, for that. We did we did activate for Memorial Day weekend and a couple other events. Um, so sometimes we do that. Depend, scale the activation depending upon the need okay. or or event. So. Uh, Sometimes there's five or six, sometimes there's 10 or 12 of us, sometimes like during the tropical systems there may be upwards of 85, 90 people wow. in this room doing this thing. Um, and so it's my role is to make sure all that happens. Wow. And, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then we, because this facility is not built to the extreme of a hardened facility for EOC, we've got a lot of limitations. One is the hardening is not there. Mm -hmm. uh, one is the, uh, we have to use a lot of space outside this room. So we have in our conference room back in our suite, we have our executive group meets there. Um, and then we have other facilities, I don't know if you got a small tour or not, but we got a real small kitchen, a small break room, you know, just to handle the day-to-day -day operations. Day-to-day -day stuff, this yeah. Place, nothing like what we need for an activation, you know, mm -hmm. 100 people yeah we do not have sleeping quarters we have you know like three showers in each or two showers or three in women's room men's room and that's it it's people sleep in the floor sleep in the hall it gets cramped yeah we have to do media press, um, briefings in here during EOC activations during all this yeah it's, uh, is that what this is for right, right here yeah, yeah. got to disrupt what's going on to, to do that so um, the the skill set to operate in here is, is very high, and they do a great job. Uh, of course, we get folks from other county departments that are assigned to us that 
during EAC activations, depending on what their role is within their departments or what that department's function is. Mm -hmm. so like procurement's one, Parks and Rec sends people here to help support the activation itself uh, within this building. Uh, our HR department will help organize uh, other departments uh, scheduling for our phone bank. So we have employees that come in and we have a phone bank along, along the back wall, which one more time, that's going on in the middle of an EOC activation, so the phones are ringing off the hooks. Oh, right yeah. There. And, um, but in all, spite of all that, we have done a great job here uh, making sure this works, it works great. Um, but those limitations have finally taken its toll, and so we're now in the design phase of the new facility. Um, and we, especially when we've learned that this building has wind load limitations that we can't take a Category 2 or higher hurricane. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which we found out right before Florence. Yeah, so, I'd, I'd say that's a problem. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, our council has, you know, agreed to fund at this point the designing and get it out to, to bids hopefully by the end of the year. Very cool. A new hardened, hardcore facility that total 72-hour redundancy back up. We can go totally off the grid for 72 hours, fully staffed, and keep on flying. Wow. Yeah, so uh, earthquake, tornado, hurricane, all of it we can handle. Um, and that's where we're going. I mean, that's where we need to be as a coastal community. Um, you know, all of our municipal partners really don't have robust emergency management programs. Mm -hmm. Each has a director. But the others do not and they all rely on us and our program so we all work together extremely well uh, when it comes to disaster response uh, across the county I always tell them and they agree you know hurricanes know no boundaries oh yeah know no boundaries so we need to know no boundaries exactly and let's just make sure we're getting business taken care of so we all operate off the same plan uh, they just rely on us to help get everything going so during activations we're in constant contact, phone calls, conference calls with all municipalities, utilities, hospitals, all of our other partners that, that are not in here. And uh, we just, you know, really make things work really well. Um, so, you know, our hopes are that when we move forward, you know, our, my big thing has always been, uh, one of the big things, continuity of government. So if we lose the capability to function as a county government, mm -hmm. What happens next? Yeah, you know, and our residents and our, especially our residents and business partners, we're allowing us to be here. You know, so we got to be here. So once it's over with, we can start getting things back to whatever the new normal is going to be. Yeah. And so we do that, and that's part of the reasoning behind the new facility. You know, it will be able to <clears throat> maintain government uh, during these times and, uh, and keep on trucking. You know, that's that's the goal. Um, so. I'm excited about that. Um, I don't want to spend another one or two years in here with hurricane season upon us. Yeah. We've been very, very lucky uh, all these years. Um, that luck will run out. Yes, it will, yeah, yeah, no doubt. And this facility flood, not itself, but around it, we get trapped with flood water. Mm -hmm. uh, that impacts our ability to run the sewer systems. And if we lose power, this building is not fully generated, just the EOC and our suite are really the only area. So our police and fire departments can't function mm -hmm. you know, outside of being in the field. So there's just so many limitations because this wasn't built to be that way. Gotcha. Uh, but it's been a great facility. I, I don't want to knock it too bad. It has really done a good job. It's withheld everything we've given it so far. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it needs a rest. Yeah. You know? And so we'll be moving out along with the 911 center will be coming in with us sharing that new facility and this will become the rest of police and fire and address their growing needs as well so, but yeah it's, it's pretty good we we were here a record for 21 days for matthew and then a record 26 days for florence wow that's a long time to be in, in this place. building yeah um, <clears throat> a lot of it was 24 hours at a time toward the end of that we were able to get out and come back a little bit but you know, the first, you know, half of that or so, you're here 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And that gets old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it gets old quick. Um, and, you know, but you got to, you know, for my role as emergency management director, 
you know, it's my job to make sure this is functioning well, keep the emergency or the executive group, which is the administrators, account system administrators, political leaders, elected officials, up to speed on what's going on and get guidance from them by briefing them up. Say, this is what we're facing. Here's my recommendations on what we're going to do. Let me know what you think. Well, if you want to do something different, then translate that back in here. Mm -hmm. And that gets pushed out amongst the rank and file of all the departments. And and then you know we have the joint information center as a part of this which is a crucial part mm -hmm. uh, rumor control is one of our biggest toughest things to try to deal with during these um, then in here obviously factoring in all these briefings and all the media stuff is tough yeah but uh, it's something i love i absolutely love this and uh, when it gets crazy it seems like it just gets easier mm -hmm. uh, it's really it's really nuts but uh, you know, we just get focused. That's the only one good thing about these disasters in our area. Everybody gets focused on one thing. Mm -hmm. So day-to-day -day operations like they are today, we're all over the map. Different things going on, different needs, different you know, requests, different whatever. But hurricane on the way, everybody, county government's focused on one thing. Yeah, that focusing event, and it brings it's everybody together. What can get done. Yeah. I've been... <clears throat> I won't say surprised, but I've been so enthusiastic about the skill set of the departments and the employees of this county. Mm -hmm. It's just insane what can be done, uh, and quickly, uh, and thoroughly, and volume doesn't seem to matter. Uh, it's just amazing. Is, so, is cross-training a big part of that, so, having no, some cross-training? Some of it is, and some of it isn't. Is some of it is just the fact that we've got uh, Here's a great example, like our public works department. Mm -hmm. you know, so we don't do streets within the county, but they do dirt roads. They do, or we don't use, do like water systems and things like that. We do roads, not water systems, and utility stuff, like municipalities sometimes do. But they were able to, after Matthew in particular, uh, the beach took a huge hit from the storm surge. And, you know, within days, they're down there with, the equipment that it just blows your mind that we have. Mm -hmm. And in no time, rebuild the beach. You know, it's been an emergency, you know, push to get the sand back up. Uh, I've seen, we're in here during Florence trying to sort out the flooding. And our stormwater department, our engineering department, and part of our public works department are in here with representatives from the National Weather Service that we asked to come in. Southeast River Forecast Center of Atlanta, we'll ask for a guy who'll come over. And they're sitting there trying to figure out well, what's the depth going to be and how bad is it going to be because no one knows. Yeah. You know, it's going to forecast to be way above our last benchmark of Matthew two years ago. And in some areas, bench or forecast to be as much as six feet higher. Well, how do you wrap your mind around that? Yeah, and that's. The terrain flat. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really trying to verify and get into the. You know, and it's just sometimes I just sit up here. Uh, and just watch. Yeah. And it's just like the steam's rolling off. You know, it's just cranking out some stuff. And, um, you know, it's it's just amazing. I mean, the things that this county's blessed with, uh, resource-wise, people-wise, and it does to me. And we all kind of feel the same way. So I hate to even say this, but what's next? Yeah. Bring it on. I mean, it is. It is incredible. Uh, and unfortunately, most of the citizens don't even realize how well it is yeah um, but my counterparts do yeah and i go to other counties of just around us and they're like we can't even touch that and we matter of fact we go help them that's awesome to you know? know yeah so, um, so it's really nice to be part of an organization like that and you know, to where everybody's focused doing the right thing and, and, and get her done cool yeah so, questions you got about this place uh not a whole lot um <clears throat> I thought your point about redundancy was really good. I, I um, did a good bit of research into a uh, chemical fire in Apex, North Carolina. It's probably been a decade ago. Um, the reason why it, uh, that was so important to me is um, I'm from Myrtle Beach, uh, but I moved to Apex when I was 10. And I, I graduated high school, Apex High School. And my parents, my mom and my stepdad still live in Apex. And... Uh, um, I remember when that chemical plume went right through downtown Apex and the 911 call center, the police yeah. department, fire station, we're all like, we got to go. Yeah. And the, 
they had a huge issue with redundancy because they had no 911. They had their their everything was centered around their their police department over there, and now they don't have it. Now it's it's gone. So what do we do now? And I thought your point about redundancy was really good because nobody, you know, or I don't want to say nobody, but it's uh, it's hard to plan for something when you say the central part of our operations in our building. Now we don't have that. What do we do? But most people didn't want to think about that's that. Right. You know, yeah. that's a that's a nightmare scenario. And we're forced into it because of the tropical systems. And but then just in general, you know, best practices as well. You know, on the 911 side, um, there are it's amazing the backup facility systems that they have for that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a small backup facility <clears throat> in the doors behind me in case that facility itself gets taken off and they need to come over here quickly. But They've got the they've got it set up now to where we can, with a matter of a few clicks, I'll say, all of our stuff can go to Charleston County, all of our stuff can go to Georgetown County, all of it can go to Florence County. Wow. And the person on the end never knows the difference. That is yeah. that's now awesome. That's impressive. Yes. That's impressive. Uh, and just to have that, I mean, that gives us all that capability. Mm -hmm. uh, and they work on that quite frequently to make sure it's good. Um, and then we've got within our own organizational uh, communications, like fiber. We have mm -hmm. fiber throughout the county, and we've got a lot of redundancy built in that. So even in this facility, if we get a fiber cut on one side of the building, the other side's function. Gotcha. Look, like the parking lot over there gets cut, we still got fiber. That's good. You know, yeah, that's good to know. Down the road somewhere, we've still got fiber. Mm -hmm. We can still communicate. Um, so. We have a lot of built-in redundancies. What we don't have is a facility that can take it. Yeah. Has you know, roof comes off here, we're kind of stuck. Yeah. Uh, we have a backup 911 center. Mm -hmm. I mean, a emergency mm -hmm. operation center, mm -hmm. but it's about the size of the half of this room. Yeah, you know? it's very small. And it's yeah. the original DOC for this county it was built back in the 70s during the Cold War era, and that room itself is like three feet thick concrete. Oh wow! Which has its problems because you can't get in and out set signals and stuff. Yeah, cell phones um, and stuff. But <clears throat> it was designed for the time, and there was probably twenty people that was were doing it. Yep. You know, so we can't we can use it as a core group, mm -hmm. and we were faced with that possibility during Florence of having to potentially move to that facility, but that facility was also almost flooded. Oh wow! So we're kind of stuck now uh, because there are no county-owned buildings that can take the wind loads from a hurricane mm -hmm. to that extreme. I mean, three and higher, we're just stuck. Gotcha. Yeah, so we just hopefully won't have that problem. Um, Definitely need a new building. Yeah. So, but it is, redundancy is huge for us. Um, our radio system, same way, you know, you can, you can cut one system out and the thing will keep on going. Um, it happens every once in a while, and I've been in here during some act some activations, and we had a, a line got got cut, and on the radio system, if it wasn't for the alarm going off mm -hmm. on the radio, you never knew. Yeah, you know, so that kind of that's impressive. That's because that's lives. Yep, that's lives. Yep, people that are in danger, or medically, or physically, or whatever the case may be. And, you know, so that's important. Yeah, you have to have that ability to communicate for sure. So yeah, this is this is awesome. I appreciate y'all taking the time to let me come in here and check this place out, yeah. and just you know, and then obviously uh, I believe Jason told me you know that you guys the last time I was here uh, that you guys were were getting hopefully getting a new building. So that was I'm glad you got a chance to talk more about that. That yeah. was really cool. So good. Yeah. awesome. Good. So, all right, well, good luck. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Yes, sir. Good luck. Appreciate to you. it. Uh, hopefully, it goes well. Yeah.